What's up, guys? Welcome to the uh, Project X Ask Me Anything. We are on week five, believe it or not, Tim. And this is not just the most advanced split screen that you've ever seen. Uh, Tim is actually sitting here right right next to me. I, I can I can touch his hair and right there. What Bradley doesn't know is I just went to the Helium 10 snack cart and I grabbed a bag of sweet onion potato chips just in preparation for this. Oh, so the door is closed. We are close proximity, and that's just for you. Cool guys. Well, anyways, <laughs> we are, uh, we just finished episodes nine and 10. Uh, hopefully we'll last, I'll last this whole episode without that onion, onion breath, but we'll, we'll, be, we'll be good. Hey, anyway, watch the laugh. That was a, that was a very throaty laugh right there. <laughs> That's evil laugh, right? Evil laugh. All right. So, uh, what we did, uh, or what did we go over in episode nine? <laughs> Do you remember? <laughs> Dude, my brain is so fried. That was all the way back from Tuesday. No, Monday. Yeah, yeah so so we talked about setting up the listings, getting that started, and that's also when we took a little road trip, right? No, that was episode ten, dude. Listen, yeah, so episode ten, <laughs> episode ten, we did we did the setup of the listings, that's right, that's and, right, that's right. I, and then I took. I, I know road trip episode there. nine was the uh, the keyword research. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we called it spying on your competitors and reverse ASIN. And for <laughs> to let you guys know, we we were literally filming new episodes today. Yeah. So just a few minutes ago, we were in the tequila room and filming content that's how up to date this is so all of the all of the episodes are mush in my brain because my brain is just completely fried from everything we've been trying to do the past two days but we got it now so nine and ten now i'm about to post this in the uh, facebook group so some more people can jump on live while i'm doing that can you take one of our um just pick anyone here one of our questions that we got from this week yeah so i'm not going to attempt to pronounce his name because he got my name wrong but it says to bradley and tom all right tom can you help us out here tom yeah tom tom here to help you uh, how do you know advance if my keywords also will be indexed for my product for a test? I did three similar items with exactly the same keywords and phrases, but they were all indexed differently. Um, if you are putting in relevant keywords, they should index. There shouldn't be a situation where they shouldn't. Um, a lot of times product keywords will index differently than you intended for them if they're not completely relevant, right? So if, if you're trying to stretch the boundaries of what's acceptable and what's actually accurate, it might not work for you. So make sure that relevancy is high. And then there are crazy situations where things just don't index it the way they're supposed to. And you can just open up a case with Amazon and say, hey, why the heck isn't my keyword indexing correctly? All right. Hit, hit another one. Hit I'm another one done, while, you're, while you're in the back. Okay, okay, okay. Um, to Joel Tav. Joel? How do you say that? D-J-O-E-L? I would say just say Joel. Joel. I, I bet you the D is Joel. silent. Uh, it says, hey, Tim and Bradley, another perfect episode. Well, he hyphenated it. Perfect episode. Perfect. Uh, he says, can I create multiple stale listings, so non-functional, without getting my metrics or worse, my product hit wrongful metrics, for lack of better wording? Um, on the subject, I have issues listing UPC codes for variations. Um, I'm not actually sure what that question's meaning, but I would not. Okay, I think he's talking about reusing old listings oh, okay. where he's already used a UPC code. Absolutely not. Whether you're testing or launching brand new ASIN, brand new listing, otherwise you miss out on that honeymoon period and things get all jacked up. So do not reuse a stale listing or an old listing that that um, you're trying to revive. All right. Let's go ahead and give shout outs to everybody who has joined us. By the way, guys, stay to the end. We'll, we'll give away some more uh, prizes. Like we're going to give, we're going to do another um, summit or is that done? Uh, well, it's generous? next or week. Uh, next we week? can give... No, 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 but we'll, we've got another workshop next week, yeah. or I'm sorry, next month that we can start giving away tickets. For. Okay. How about that? Uh, we'll give some Helium 10 t-shirts out as well. And we also have a private label Legion I thought sticker. this was going yeah. on your wall. Well, I was supposed to go through the wall. Yeah. Just, oh, <laughs> just like, so, it goes out so of focus. whoever, whoever wins the t-shirts will ship this giant private label Legion decal too. There we go. Let's get some shout outs. We got Bartos in the house. What's up? Sweet 310. How's it going? Gabby. What's up? Aaron. Uh, Annabella, what's up? Uh, we got 3000 RO. That's a, that's the, the name, the, the name of the day so far. Uh, Andre 3000, is that you? Uh, Ibrahim, what's up? Peter, uh, sweet 310, anyone going to San Francisco? So I, I guess sweet 310 is going to, uh, to the seller growth summit. Hey, you. Don't forget guys. So, uh, it's not too late to go to uh, either white label expo, which is a free event in Vegas that we will have a booth at and that I'll be speaking at. And we're doing a little private label, private label project X meetup, um, slash private label Legion. I guess you could say we'll do that. Are, are you going to be there? I'll be there. Yeah. yeah uh, right. Wednesday. Remember we Wednesday. Wednesday at noon, come to the helium 10 booth. I'll be there 
and we'll do something cool and fun. Mel, my assistant, I forgot to put that on my calendar. Please put that on my calendar. 11 a.m. Wednesday, I need to be in the uh, in the booth for the Project X meetup. And then Friday, we got Seller Growth Summit in San Francisco uh, as well. Uh, we got Martina, our teen. Oh, Handyman's back. This is, Handyman's one of the loyal ones who's been in, I think, like every AMA episode and also the uh, live broadcast uh, yeah. so far. So how's it going? Uh, we got Roslyn. That's our uh, our resident Aussie. There we go. Coming from Australia. I think she's been in every single one. Celeste from Salt Lake City, Utah. Celeste, bring me some um, red iguana tamales, please. That's best restaurant in Salt Lake. Scott, how's it going? All right. So uh, go ahead and start hitting us with your questions, guys. Um, let us know what you have a question about. And if we skip your question, uh, don't get uh, bent out of shape. It's because it's probably not about episodes nine and 10. All right. So let's try and keep this uh, relevant here. Or yeah. So let's see. Here we go. Annabella, this was uh, right before the process of, you know, it's episode 10. We, we were unloading the coffin sh shelf shipment in Torrance. And so her question is, before that, did we use an inspector to check the, the goods before shipment? Yeah, always inspect what you expect. There is never a situation where you would not get a production run inspected. Now, you don't have to get a sample order of five units inspected. It's not worth it. But generally, a good inspection from China is going to cost between $100 and $200 for a large shipment, they usually take 20% of the goods. Um, make sure that they're sending you reports with everything. They're scanning the barcodes to make sure they scan correctly. They're weighing cases to make sure all the cases weigh the same so there's not inconsistencies. everything. Inspect what you expect. I don't care if this is a supplier that you've been using for five years. Every new shipment gets an inspection. All right. Uh, Sweet 310 is going to both events. That means I can't use the same presentation in White Label and... Uh and Seller Growth. I'm going to have to do something different. I was going to do that anyways. <laughs> I never I never recycle my, my stuff. He's lying. <laughs> uh, Yasmin says, where's the next meetup after the Seller Summit located? Probably uh, that'll be around Prosper. So Prosper. Monday the 23rd, we've got a big uh, Helium 10 social. So anybody, if you ask me, if you're, if you're a Helium 10 user, you get free access uh, Which is to that. Prosper and yeah. ASD. You remember yeah. that? They're, they're in combined. So if you don't want to go to Prosper, which is a big Amazon conference, there's ASD, which is in the same facility right next door. And it's a huge trade show and tons of uh, like content and, and stage presentations and stuff. And there's also a workshop I'm putting on uh, VegasASDworkshop.com. Check that out. All right. In episode uh, 10, we talked about indexing because we were setting up the listing and then we showed you how after you have the listing live, you got to check it to make sure you're indexed. And sometimes you're not. Looks like Artine is having that, that, that trouble. So the first thing, Artine, I'm just going by this, the second, your, your last name. Um, I would assume that you might be uh, somewhere in Europe. Um, I'm just making an assumption here, but that would uh, explain why you might be seeing uh, different results on index checker. So if you're running index checker and you're not in the United States, it doesn't matter if you're in Europe or Asia or whatever, make sure that in your uh, Chrome browser for amazon.com that you have a US address as the delivery address on the top left. It'll say, Hey, deliver yep. ship to. So just put in a, a US zip code and then run index checker again and check it. Now, if you've done that and you're still not indexed, then yes, it could be an issue of Amazon just doesn't think those keywords are relevant, yep. or it could be a forbidden keyword that you don't realize. But in either case, uh, if you've uh, exhausted everything, go ahead and open up a case with uh, Amazon. Oh, oh, handmade. Oh, handmade. Also, yeah, that's, handmade. that's the big thing I'm yeah. saying. You're trying to list this in the handmade section, guys. There is not a situation, I firmly and strongly believe this, where anybody should be listing in Amazon Handmade. It was set up to try to compete with Etsy, but it indexes differently. The results show up differently. It does not matter. There's not an advantage to listing in Handmade because there's not enough traffic going to it specifically. So just list in regular categories. Get away from Handmade because it has some wonky stuff. Bartos doesn't think we're live. I, I bet you th this this might not be a name, but he might be like trying to make us say something bad in another language. But e either way, I can't pronounce uh, that, so I'm not going to try. But yes, Bartos, tell your daughter if that's real that that we are live. I, it probably is like hello, like that looks like a name, Al Alicia. Yeah. Alicia. Yeah. She, she, she actually Alicia. I don't know. You try it out. You're we're braver live. than I. All right. Here we are. <laughs> um. Let's see. Here we go. About episode ten. Listing optimization. Jeff says, Amazon style guide suggests very short bullet points. Some categories are 80 bytes. Does it hurt to use much longer bullet points? Well, whatever, you'll know. It's Sometimes it's not even by category. It's by yeah. listing. I have had not only the same category, but the same subcategory, same brand, same exact subcategory. And if you go into edit listing on one, it'll say, oh, you can do like 80 characters for the title. And another one, it says you can do 200. So it's not necessarily by category. So go into edit listing. Check your bullet points and just see what's the limit, all right? 
Uh, usually the bullet points, you'll never hit the limit. Like I've never seen a, uh, an 80 bullet point. So whatever they're suggesting, go by what we had said, go by the niche theme. What is working for your competitors in yep. that category? It's different strokes for different folks. You know, some categories, short bullet points work better, some longer ones, but, but it, it just keep in mind that even if you're in one of the longer ones, you can only get what one thousand. Yeah, your first one thousand. And remember, the bullet points are not just a technical place to put technical information and keywords. We have to sell our product, so it doesn't matter if it's long or short. Just follow like the other successful sellers in that subcategory, like Bradley said, and make sure that you're using some keywords, but you're really just selling the product. What about that hair, Tim? Why? What? What? what is, is it because it's very nicely uh, groomed today? I don't know. I, I don't know. It's, uh, it, yes, it's, it's it's ridiculous. Can I tell you that my five year old daughter? makes fun of my haircut. When I go and get it cut and it's short on this side, she's like, why does your hair look like that? And I'm like, because the lady cut it this way, right? Because I'm not fashion forward, so I trust my hairstylist. So I don't know. I think it looks silly, but it is what it is. All right. Well, <laughs> it, my hair is better than the short shorts from episode one. I will say yes, that. Yes, yes. Improvement. Will you have a PPC episode? Yeah, yes. we talk about setting up the PPC. I believe that's in 12, 12 and possibly 13. Yes, and our team is in Europe. So try try that trick I, I, uh, and let me know if that works, our team, for you. Um, ah, ah, good. Peter says, so when you went to the 3PL episode 10, the coffin shelf had the sticker with a UPC. Why didn't you just have the FN SKU pre-printed? Then that instead of the UPC, I see that you had to cover up the UPC with the uh, FN SKU. So we had, we had made that upc actually way before we even had an fn skew like before we even had that listing remember we had the in episode 10 we were barely making yeah 10 10 we were barely making the listing and in that same episode the product was already there so that is an option like later on like maybe in future ones we could uh we could like change that image file and make the fn skew but but so, things could happen with your fn skew and then you'd be kind of screwed with that you'd have to relabel well everything. i think what he's asking is why did why did we use the fn skew and not send under the upc and I think it's because I made a mistake because when we printed these labels, we actually used that UPC code from that label on the test listing. Oh, okay. you remember that's what we did. So then we print all these labels and went, crap, we used the wrong UPC code. So since we were kind of rushing through this, we made a little boo-boo there. But generally, we could have just used the UPC, except we'd burn that UPC code on the test listing. All right. Shame on, uh, shame on you. I know. All right. Why don't you go ahead and take a couple. Uh, I need to do some things in the background. Take a couple more of these questions uh, from the different episodes. Okay. Um, what's a copywriter? That's a question from Watchmen Five. Um, copywriter is something that we sometimes outsource on our listings. Uh, that's a professional, basically, person that knows exactly the way to write things clearly, uh, calmly, um, uh, very, very professionally. If you don't want to outsource a copywriter, and one copywriter, we talked about Emma, right? Marketing by Emma. I think you've had her on the podcast. I, I love her. She does. A great job and she's really reasonable if you want to outsource her the other thing you can do is use grammarly nobody's using grammarly it's a free chrome app and grammarly will actually even make suggestions for like the flow of a sentence and you can use them to suggest um your listing copywriting um question for the ama from you dig he says does the 3pl inspect the merchandise for you or do you need to do it by yourself so a 3pl here in the us that's received the products absolutely can inspect that but if you're counting on them to inspect it, you've done it wrong. You should have your goods inspected at the factory before you even pay the final balance, let alone ship it and get it here. Now, they should inspect it just for damage. So they shouldn't have to open up all the boxes and look at it. They're just going to maybe snap pictures of the cartons to make sure they don't have like a forklift pallet forks, you know, shoved through the pallet or something like that. But generally speaking, it should be inspected in China. The only exception I've seen is I've had clients that like chip very fragile, breakable stuff. And when I owned my own 3PL, we did some crazy stuff like, you know, I didn't want to open up everything in glass, but I would take the shipping cartons and me and my staff would shake the cartons and see if we could hear like broken glass. And as long as nothing's broken, we just ship the cartons in because we knew it was good. So there are, are a few extremes, but generally don't trust your 3PL to inspect it. Get a third party inspection done at the factory before you even ship it. Um, more questions about the FN code and UPC that we talked about. Um, uh, someone says, hey, around five minutes in, this is from episode nine. Mm -hmm. You talked about stacking smaller search volume keywords to get higher search volume. How does this work with PPC campaigns? Would you then need to run PPC for all those keywords with this thing at Costly? So the, the short answer is yes. Whatever keywords we're using to stack, we're going to absolutely run PPC on that. And we're going to get deeper into PPC in episodes, I think, 11 and 12. We're going to set that up um, 
to what? You're gonna see what I'm doing. Oh no! I just saw something. In my, I just saw something in your peripheral vision on it. Oh, we've got multiple screens here, and I'm a little bit worried about what I think I just saw. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, someone says how to rank products in top position. Please give me the ranking tips. That's a really big question. We'll get there, but you have to watch all episodes, and uh, in the later episodes, we'll definitely talk about that. Um, are you ready for more questions from? Uh, yeah, well, let's do a couple more questions while I'm while I'm uh, still working on this thing. I'm trying to set something up for the first prize here. It's going to be a caption this. Uh, it's going to be a caption this <laughs> picture uh, picture, oh, no. and then that'll that'll <laughs> win the, the first it's that'll win good. the first prize. Okay, um, let's keep going here. Uh, <laughs> Is the 30 to 60 days of suppressing the listing meant from the time you post it or send it? In different words, what is the usual time from shipping date to a date when the item is spread across the FCs? So 30 to 60 days is how long it takes usually to ship from like China or India into Amazon. That's not what we're talking about. The suppression is just from when I take my test. And this this actually goes back to some a little bit older episodes testing. But where I'll set up a listing and then intentionally suppress it is just for my tests. And it's just to get the products from me into Amazon, which usually only takes a few days. Um, that's not like your big international shipment. Okay. Oh man, it is what I thought it was going to yep, be. Yep. This is going to be great. Uh, DD says, I'm in the U S indexing issues. Nothing shows up. All right. Well, DD, uh, that would be a case. Like we had said, if you're in the U S and you have indexing issues, it's just Amazon is not indexing you for whatever reason. So I'm assuming that you've done all three checks in, in helium 10 index checker and it's all three are a negative, meaning that there's a line through it. And so if so, then yeah, I would open up a, a, a case with Amazon just to see, you know, what's up and check your category too. Sometimes your category changes, which is why in the other episode we said to make sure to turn on like alerts by Helium 10, because that'll let you know if somebody changes your category, because you can be de-indexed, you know, like you could have a, um, what is it? This is a motion sensor device. This would probably be in like tools and home improvement or something. Why is that in your office? So it goes on the ceiling. You see that hole in the ceiling? Yes. And what happened was when I moved my desk to this side, it's like out of the range. So the lights would always turn off. So I have to have this uh, on my desk so that it knows that I'm here oh, for the, the lights. lights. Yeah, yeah. So anyways, but yeah, if, if you're in the tools and scientific uh, category or whatever, and then all of a sudden your this product is moved to the baby category, well, a whole bunch of uh, you know words that are relevant to this, now maybe you might be de-indexed for because yeah. your category is different. So keep that in mind too, DD. Um, let's see. Talk about this a little bit, uh, Tim. Journey uh, to business success says, should we put brand name in front of power keywords? Would it need to be... Um, is, it's more of a title question to me. Like people usually ask about the title. Should I put it? Yeah. In so top? remember we're selling keywords, not products. All right. So I would, and he's talking about that canonical URL. Yeah. So sometimes Amazon is forcing your brand name into the front of your listing, which is a little bit of a, a bummer because we can't force the canonical URL to carry the keywords that we want. So if we can put a preference on keywords over brand name, do it. If you can force the canonical URL, with keywords, do it because the keywords are going to have more search volume than your brand, right? Yeah. So put the put the priority, definitely put the priority on keywords, not brand name. Okay, let's keep going with the questions here. Um, uh, I think Sweet Three Ten we answered that about the FN SKU, or but but he has he has this kind of related. When you had the U, uh, UP, I'm assuming he means UPC, not UPS, already on the box. So, like, let's say there's somebody else who threw in products. Well, if you have commingled, co 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 commingled, co yeah, commingled product, then it's kind of like, well, who who gets the sale? You don't know where that product comes from. So, we, me personally, I always try and use FN SKU so that I know uh, that the sale is attributed to me if if it's actually my product. Because, like, what if somebody else, if it's commingled, uh, co and then somebody else throws in a whole bunch of a crap product, right? Yeah. Uh, with just the UPC and, and you know, the whole, the whole listing gets suspended because yeah. Amazon figures, Hey, everything is crap, you know? Yeah. So I use, use FN SKU. Um, okay. Martina says, if you have the right keywords in the title, bullet points and back end, there is no way you don't get indexed, right? Wrong. A lot of times there's keywords that you don't realize are forbidden by Amazon. You know, and, and it's not, I'm not talking about just cuss words and marijuana or like a drug related word. I mean, that's a no brainer. There are sometimes words that like, like best bestseller yeah. or something like yeah. that, you know, um, you and do. also if you're using a keyword that doesn't fit the category or subcategory you're in, Amazon will DNX it. So make sure that your category is relevant. So just a completely random example, if I am trying to sell a supplement and I've somehow be, been categorized in shoes 
like it's not going to index most of my keywords because most, most of those keywords are not relevant to shoes, right? Yeah. And sometimes it happens by accident. Amazon just like changes your category. Sometimes it's malicious. It's black hat stuff. People are literally adjusting your listing into a different category. So this happens. If if you've got a lot of competition, it's more likely to happen. So the talking about the the category change, uh, yeah, uh, Jerry's. You should you should open up a case with Amazon. I mean, if it doesn't work, to like manually try and move it back to the right one. Absolutely, open up a case. Yep. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Gabby says, if you put the brand on the title, two words, you would only have three left. So you basically can't hack the canonical URL. I didn't understand this, uh, quite well. Gabby Athens here. Um, no, I mean, yeah, you, if you put the brand name and it's, and it's, uh, two words, you, uh, or three words. Yeah. You'd only have two words or three words left, but still that's valuable real estate. Yes. There's plenty of great two and three keyword uh, phrases uh, for the coffin shelf. We have a great canonical that we did for that. And, and our import, most important keyword is there. I, I believe on the egg tray too, we, we were yep. able to hack the canonical and we have our most most important keyword. So just because you have to put your brand in the beginning, it's not going to ruin it unless yeah. you have a five word brand name. Which And it doesn't always have. put put the uh, brand name, but if it does, make sure to use those other two or three slots for your best keywords. What is up with 204 for read, like spamming the group here? Come on, 204 for read. We, we answered that already. <laughs> All right. Uh, what is Andre, this? Andre 3000 says means Alicia in Polish. All right, cool, cool. What is this? Uh, Where? Oh, Luis says, Tim, ponte una gorra and el pelo está feo. So he said, put a hat on because your hair is ugly. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> wow, Thank you, Luis. Luis. <laughs> that's very you nice. You could have translated that nicer. <laughs> no, that, that's just the literal <laughs> translation. Right. Yeah, there's not much way to sweet to 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 spice that up here. All right, um, we have two different keywords. Okay, if we have two different keywords with high search volume, like wall posters, posters for wall, is it considered as repeating if both are using the title? Now, here here's the thing. Even before there, again, this is more like thinking like a buyer instead of thinking like a seller. Regardless, if you can find a loophole or if Amazon likes it or not, just think if you were a buyer, do you want to read a title that says uh, wall posters? Um, for uh wall, wall posters, posters uh wall posters great gift for posters for a wall yeah i mean like like, like don't do that it, that looks ridiculous yeah if you see that as a buyer you're like eh. so don't don't get too hung and, up on algorithms and, and stuff like remember that. amazon is going to index more broadly than we would so if we put wall posters you might also index automatically for posters for wall right because they'll swap and move stuff around so you don't necessarily need to duplicate between back end and front end and all that stuff. One time is fine as far as indexing. But yeah, definitely make sure that we are still making a presentable listing and we don't look ridiculous. So bring that a little bit closer. All right. Oh, excuse me. Um, I can turn me up a little bit. That too. Is 3PL storage fee much less than Amazon storage fee? Uh, you, it depends on, I mean, if you're just in some premium storage place, you know, you might pay a little bit extra. But most likely because you see the, the 3PL storage fees, you have all your product like on a pallet, like, you know, like maybe 100, 200 units fit on a pallet uh, for the coffin shelves. Even that's pretty big. There's like 300, I think, that fit on a pallet. And a lot of uh, 3PL companies will just charge you between like 15 and $25 a month for storage. Now, Amazon, the reason why they usually charge more is because your product is distributed amongst like probably like 20, 30 warehouses or yeah. something. And so it's, it's, it is, it does put a logistical strain uh, on them to have it as yeah. opposed to just one little pallet spot. So generally the answer is yes. 3PLs are usually cheaper for long-term storage. All right. Somebody who appreciates one of my terrible accents. Thank you very much, Dan. Everyone here speaks like that. Where, where are you from, Dan? He'll probably say like Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> I got when I got to the office this morning. I walked in the Helium Ten office, and they were like, uh, "I won't tell you who said it." They're like, "Hey guys, can you tone down the offensive accents?" I was like, "Offensive? I thought we nailed them." Oh, so yeah. look, we have proof right now. Well, what was the old Fig Newton word? It's not a cookie, mother. It's a Fig Newton. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's keep going here. Um, Celeste, what I would suggest to you is going back to product if you're if you're if you're talking if you don't have a product I, i'm not sure if i'm understanding but if you don't if you're stuck trying to find your first product go back to episodes two and three we got some great tips in there that'll and, open up a whole and mode. look don't get discouraged i like i have people in my coaching program that went months before they found their first one and would like click now they've been able to replicate it more and more and more so sometimes it just takes a little longer and sometimes it takes a little bit of luck but uh just keep following the process the you know like the old adage says like 
the more hooks you have in the water, the more fish you're going to catch, right? So just keep spending more time running down those rabbit trails and yeah. you will start to find those products. And then again, that the project, maybe you did watch episodes in Project X. Well, that's just one way of product research. Uh, look in the pro training videos in, in Black Box and Helium 10. I got different ways to search there. Look at Freedom Ticket. Kevin King has a module where he's got this spreadsheet where you got to do like 15 different. He's got a completely different way. So, yeah. so there's no one way to skin a cat uh, and there's no one way to do product research. Uh, I know it's frustrating at times. You, you think you find something, then you go to validate. It's like, ah, oh, dang it. It's, it's, it's not, it's not Dad, what I burn it. Dang, damn it. Um, so, so yeah, don't, don't go, don't get frustrated. Now here's Oz group. Our buddy Oz group limited says, why did you limit the minute search volume? I think he's talking about episode nine. So we did it in two different phases. So like the very first time when I was looking for the, the kind of keywords that I wanted in my title and that I wanted to have in phrase form sometime in my listing, I did put a minimum search volume there so I can find like that most search that of the highest uh, relevancy. But then what I did was I opened up the search and I, I, I lessened that minimum even more because now I want a broad, uh, broad search. So on the search, the highest uh, relevant search volume, uh, uh, search terms. Those are the ones you want in phrase form. So that's why I picked the, I picked the minimum there. Yep. Uh, Stoyan says, Tim next, this is like the hair episode. Like all, everybody's uh, like all obsessed with your hair today. Next time you should get a Mohawk hairstyle to match your private label Legion logo. Oh, good point. That's it. That's, that, that's, that's an idea. That's actually, that's actually a good <laughs> all idea. right. That's not terrible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, in a previous episode of Project X, you drew out common phrases from the competitor reviews to use in your listing. Is there a tool for that in Helium 10? Yes, that is it. It's called Review Downloader. It's in the Chrome extension. So just when, when you're on any listing on Amazon, and I think we show that in episode nine too, um, or episode 10. Uh, if you're in any listing, hit the little uh, Helium 10 logo on the top right of your screen, drop down menu, hit Review Downloader, and then hit Analysis. Yes. Uh, would you share your sourcing agent again? Probably not today. That was only like a couple times we wanted to do that. That's, Look, that's it. We, we've got like really good sourcing agents. And if we keep sharing them, they're going to get blown up and uh, overwhelmed. But there's a million good sourcing agents out there. When you were looking at competitor reviews, one says you flipped it over and used it as a cheese platter. Would you pursue keywords related to this? Absolutely. That, that's one of the reasons you should do even after you've launched your product. Um, you know, this is still about kind of episode 10 about the listing optimization. If you find stuff there at the beginning when you're first optimizing your listing or when you're re-optimizing the listing, remember what we went over in episode 10, you're going to want to do that again sometime. Um, uh, sometime just because, you know, buyer behavior changes. You want to make sure you always have your, ips, uh, your ipsing lipsized, <laughs> your ips, listing optimized. Ips, ipsing lipsized. Yeah. <laughs> Don't do that. That's illegal in some states, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't. We can't go crazy like we did last oh, week. No. I, I, oh, I don't know if our buddy is going to come back on here. Composure. Uh, keywords. And <sighs> Ooh, Annabella, you should have been on the uh, keyword research webinar yesterday. We got a, a, a secret tip that we're not, we can't talk about on here. But yeah, Tim is that Jordan my tip? had a tip. Yeah, that was that was Tim's tip. You can probably find that in the Helium Ten Users Group, right? The probably, link to the probably yeah. Event. But I think we might have taken that off. So if you weren't on that webinar, you might have missed out on that one. But in, in, in short, there are the, the answer kind of to your question is yes, Annabella. But it's not the names. The name of your image won't help you. Muziashi says to find keywords which are, I'm assuming you mean brand? No, band. Band. I know, but I'm... Yeah, like... A oh, list. band. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you meant brand. You mean band as yeah. in like... No. Um, the best way you can find out is, is by asking Amazon. I have I mean, no idea. The, the, I don't they know don't if have there's a list. a list of that. There's no list that I've ever seen. Um, so you can just ask Amazon. Katie from Oregon just got here. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's <laughs> up? Richard says, uh, if they want to cheat, how can they change my listing? Yeah, I mean, anybody Ooh. can add their... Uh, your ASIN, uh, if your if your product is not gated, which ninety nine point nine percent of products nope. aren't gated, um, they can just go in there and change it. It's not all. It sometimes might take a, a couple of ways, but if they find an Amazon employee who's willing, who they can yep. convince to change it, they'll change and it. And they also use flat file upload sometimes, mm -hmm. which are more heavily considered by Amazon, but less likely to be scrutinized. So there are some pretty nasty methods for people to to change your categories and add keywords that aren't supposed to be there. The hair episode continues. Mar Martina says, Thank your you. hair looks normal. Don't listen to them. Thank you, Martina. New Under the Sun says, haven't missed an episode. Awesome job. I have a new respect for sumo wrestling Zumba instructors that don't eat eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Is he talking about you or me? <laughs> well, I eat eggs and I've never Zumba'd yeah. or... Actually, you have zumba I've well, Zumba'd once. Got, on stage, do zumba. got me in stage yeah. in Austin, Zillion Texas. It was ugly, to say the least. 
Uh, Nikita says you're still filming Project X, X episodes. What are they about? Ooh, What's coming? That's actually stay tuned. A, stay that, tuned. I mean, yeah. could we tell them a little bit? Um, oh, we'll no. we'll tell them. We Ooh. we we got a couple. We we, we did can, a couple episodes. Can today. we give them a hint that? Today we tested one of our new products that combined keywords. Yep, yep. We can't tell you what it is. Can't we tell you what it is. But we tested, a, we tested new a new product yep. today. Um. All right, Fahama, go back to episodes two and three about this, but uh, that's not about the last couple of episodes. But welcome to the show. And <laughs> Benji, awesome. <laughs> what? One below that. Oh, brother! <laughs> the force is with Tim's hair. We we are just and she listen, gave a Star Trek. She I'm gave like a Star Trek symbol. There. Star Trek symbol with a Star, Star Wars. Wars. Uh, listen, I'm learning that there are not that many 34 year old males that have as solid of a hairline as mine. So, guys, let me have it. Like I may be ugly, but I'm not going bald. So, there you go. <laughs> you have any gray hair yet? I'm, look, I'm getting a cup. I don't know if you guys. I'm getting a few. I asked somebody the other day, should I be like touching up my beard? And they were like, no, it makes you look wise. And I was like, well, I can take all the help color, I can get. color my hair a little bit for the first time ever. Mm. But hey, I made it to year, uh, age 40 before having gray hair. So uh, yep. I can't complain. I can't complain. All right. Um, let's see. Scott, this is about episode 10 because we visited a 3PL warehouse in, in California. What are other charges associated with a 3PL to get product to Amazon? So it all depends. If you remember in episode 10, that wasn't our product, but what, that we were filming them. You saw them there. They were doing some kind of like dish soap or something. And that might've been a bundle. So if there's bundling that you're going to have to pay them to do that, if there's bubble wrapping, you got to pay them, put stickers. And a lot of these things, except for the bundling, Amazon can do, but three PLs are always cheaper than Amazon. Like the yep. Amazon just is stickers. They just put the freaking FBA sticker on 20 cents uh, per, per one. Imagine if you have a thousand, uh, yep. you know, in one shipment and then add that up over the year. You're gonna pay a fraction of that uh, at a three PL. Yeah, most three PLs are like ten cents. Yeah. Uh, about the listing optimization episode. Hey, Bradley and Tim, I'm Andrew. New sellers who don't have brand registry can only put NA, and my product title became NA uh, Coffin Shelf. I That's... hope you didn't sell an NA Coffin Shelf. But yes, that 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 you you have to do NA at first, but then all you have to do is open up a case right after that. Send yep. them a picture of your product with the UPC or with the FN SKU or something. And show, make sure they know that that's your product because it has your logo on there or something. And then they'll, they'll change the uh, brand name for you. Or show them a website. You know, yeah. a lot of different things work. Man, there's a lot of sellers in Singapore. There is. I you, did a, you know Andy? Are you, are you buddies with uh, uh, yeah, Andy? Yeah. Yep. I did a workshop there like a few months ago in Singapore. And there was a lot of people there. It was awesome. Right. Should you base your first order quantity based on sales velocity of main keywords you want to rank for? That's tough. That's like asking which color is best. <laughs> like every scenario is different. Now, I feel like even the best seller, well, for example, the coffin shelf, the sourpuss coffin shelves, I wouldn't base my estimated volume on them because they weren't doing it well. Like we had no, no track record. So it's a little bit of a gut guess. Like we just have to kind of wing it. Um, we don't want to spend too much money and be stuck with months and months of inventory or if, you know, the product for some reason fails, you know, which it shouldn't if you go through the validation, uh, you don't want to be stuck with inventory forever. But we definitely want to make sure that we get ahead enough where we can re, you know, like recirculate and, and order and get it shipped in. Now, it doesn't always work. As you guys will see in future episodes, we've actually screwed that up pretty seriously um, on one of our products. And you're going to laugh at us for making such a Bush League rookie error. But it's because things, I'm, I feel like I'm hinting. Let's just say things went so much better than we expected that it kind of caused problems. All right. Is that a fair, That's fair all right. statement? 204 for Reed says, uh, much appreciate, much love. Your strategy and keywords will work in a saturated market. I mean, it's if you're talking about the keyword research that we did, excuse me, in episode nine, it's the same strategy that you would use regardless. But yep. will you be successful in trying to get into a saturated yep. market? No, but our, the well, strategy is the same. Our keyword method for research helps you avoid saturated yeah but if you are selling in saturated like i've got i've got people in my group that are selling in supplements like one of the most saturated uh categories and i mean just massively saturated and the methods for optimizing are still exactly the same that we're teaching uh, there, here's a question here that just got me confused uh do you have a a, a secondary family in india dude that somebody's listen, trying to support i am meeting <laughs> i don't know oh so I'm going to be in India in April. Can I give a plug real quick to Megla? Sure. Listen, guys, 
if you have at all been interested in sourcing in India, which I have been for a couple of years, it's amazing. And you want to get some boots on the ground, India sourcing trip.com. Megla, you've had, you've, you've talked about her a little bit on the podcast. What they're talking about is every time I go to India, all these Australians send Tim Tams, which is like a cookie that's not nearly as good as Oreos, by the way, like Oreos beats Tim Tams. And then I bring them home with me. So moral of the story, India sourcing trip. Yes. Send them to India. I'll be there in April. And Tim Tams are better than Oreos. Babes, papes, <laughs> papes, papes. Pop poppies, papes, 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 babes, papes, uh, says, uh, <laughs> That's how you say grandpa on the brand name automatically. Usually they don't, but I, maybe they're starting to, I mean, they've always said they would, um, yeah, everything in the title adds up to you is counting towards your character. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, oh, okay. Martina is now my favorite person. What? I'm actually over 40. Uh, I wish I was still 40. What? No way you look 20. You got to see him try to walk. He's all decrepit and stiff and he's got <laughs> leg joint problems. He's like an old lab. <laughs> Not today because we just had our corporate masseuse in a couple of days ago. You miss, did, did you ever get a massage from, from Dr. What's his name? Dr. Keith. Yes. It was delightful. Indeed. All right. Let's say, um, Frank says, you guys make me laugh to the bank. Like, why do we make you go to the bank? You send this money because we're so funny. Like, yeah, these let, guys are hilarious. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna send them a them check. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see. Uh, Danielle is asking about trade assurance. We were talking about that in a different episode. That's the uh, episode six and seven, I believe, for the sourcing. Yeah, and that's trade assurance only from Alibaba mm -hmm. Pay or Alipay. Here we go. Why don't you put the bubble wrap in China? We actually did. That's um. Did you watch episode 10? Boza, uh, Bona Bonanza? No. Bozana. 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 But um, we actually opened it. When I opened it up, it already had the bubble wrap. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even realize that at the time. But yeah. Well, Don't worry. I, you, you told the factory to do I right? took care of that. Yeah. And and remember why we did that. Review Downloader. When we were researching in episode... Mm, I can't remember. Whatever episode it was, we were, we were pulling up um, li uh, reviews and comments on the Sour Push shelf they were broken, right? And they were getting hit in the corners of the, the, the uh, paintless chips. So when I sourced those, I specifically asked for bubble wrap. Okay. Craig says, hey guys, uh, completely. You hear Craig, uh, you talk about me looking young. Craig looks pretty young right here. But um, <laughs> any advice where to start? Really want to approach this? Go back to episode one, one and two. Absolutely. That's the perfect way to start. Um, Handyman says, for, for the love of Pete, who's Pete? Um, Pete's that real serious guy. Yeah, yeah. But Handyman, I agree. Yeah. Get off my hair, people. We got people, work to on. do. Gosh. Gosh, darn it. <laughs> Dag nabbit. Um, our team says, where did you learn Spanish? Just most of well, my he, friends growing up. I'm Filipino, yep. but I, I, for some reason, I speak Spanish. I don't know how that happened. Well, you but. live in San Diego. Yeah, but I, I knew before I lived there, I knew Spanish. <laughs> Anyways, um, uh, my products sucked. Stuck? Or, okay. Stuck. Sorry, yeah, uh, my products are, are stuck in the U.S. port. I don't know. I haven't heard of uh, it being no, stuck by the coronavirus. Not coronavirus. That, reason, yeah. Listen, I had a shipping company for a few years, and it's just luck of the draw. I mean, crazy things happen, especially like in California. Uh, not the past couple of years, but before that, there were things like union strikes and you know labor disputes at the port, which would slow things up. Customs and Border Patrol randomly select items. So we might have 10 shipments that were perfect, and the 11th one, they said, oh, we're going to inspect your container and held it up for 30 to 60 days. It's luck of the draw. To avoid that, make sure that your paperwork's in order. You've got your Lacey Act and your FDA stuff, anything that's like applicable because every little thing that they can scrutinize and say, oh, there may be a problem, they'll pull your product for inspection and delay it. Uh, Paulina says, it sounds like the best office ever, tequila bar and massages. And that's just, you ain't even seen the half of it. We got meditation. I I'm not into that kind of stuff, so I don't do that. But they got meditation people who come here and help us out. But uh, guys, if anybody is interested in working for us, helium10.com forward slash jobs. And they have onion always. flavored potato chips. I uh, definitely know bar. that. Um, <laughs> definitely know that today. Let's see. Uh, I noticed that when I shorten my product, the image score improves slightly. Are these two related? The image score? What do you mean image score? What's what's image score? It's probably in your... Uh, yeah, that, that has nothing to do... Nothing to do. Remember yeah. that the image title makes no difference whatsoever. Yeah. So that something else has happened. It just happens to coincidentally be near around that same time. All right, let's keep going. Uh, Jeff, your question. Uh, we, we didn't uh, cover that in this episode uh, about Seller Central and doing partnerships. That, that's a five-minute uh, question right there. Uh, sor uh, Yuk Sars talked about sourcing in Japan. We talked about sourcing. You can source in any country where you can get a product that you can make a profit on, and that's good quality. 
Yeah, sure. Source anywhere. That's a previous episode too. I saw the bubble wrap, but then you added more at the 3PL. No, we did not add more bubble wrap. We mm -hmm. did it. Uh, uh, I remember if I recall, I opened it up. I'm like, oh, wow, this has bubble wrap. So we don't need, we don't need to put it. Yeah. And we yeah. didn't film that. They were putting bubble wrap on like, uh, it was like some dish deodorant or something or dish deodorant. Yeah. Dish detergent. Yeah. So in the B roll, you saw yeah. a different product. All right. Uh, here's a great question by Richard. Uh, keyword research episode nine uh, in a foreign language market. That is really hard. I hope you can share some tips. So, so basically every single step that we did in episode nine, guess what? Do that same exact thing for the foreign markets because you can. You, there's a drop down menu in Cerebro and Magnet and all of our keyword research tools. Go into the market you're looking for because it's different in every country. All right. Yep. Even even if you try, even if you're a a, a completely bilingual person, um, or even if you go from the from UK to 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 England, you or UK to England. <laughs> <laughs> if you go from if, US if you to go, America, if you go from America to the United States, there's a difference. If you go from Mexico to Mexico, <laughs> no, all right. If you go from US to UK, <laughs> same language, but you still use the drop down because uh, people search differently in different places. I'm so glad you did that, not me. That was oh great. My goodness. It's been a long week, guys. I spent <laughs> two nights here at the office. Um, they didn't tell you what the violation. Amazon suspended my account. Could that be I'm using a brand name which domain I own, but I don't have? No. No, there's, there's, something something going, there's something going on. But you can open up a case and they should tell you. Um, a canonical question from Michal or Michael about, uh, I didn't, did I understand it right? We must put five most important words first without brand name and then put sign. So like, yeah, it's not necessarily five. It has to be five total big words, but hopefully somewhere in there, you're going to have a uh, one of your top search search terms. All right. And then yes, that'll get up in the canonical URL as long as they have a dash afterwards, usually. All right, now we're gonna go for the, we're gonna give away three Helium 10 shirts, all right? Now, what you have to do to win these three shirts, it's going to be the first three people that we pick. It's not necessarily the first three people. Can I be the, the judge? First, yeah, you'll be the judge. Okay. This is gonna be a caption this. So you guys are gonna caption this picture that we shot here at the Helium 10 headquarters outside. I, and look, I and forgot want, about this. We want the best caption and the first three that Tim likes, uh, you guys are the, going to have a the first three that legitimately make me laugh. We'll get t-shirts. All right. Is it up? Wait. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Oh. Let's hear the uh um, this was right outside, uh, in Irvine, California. And this wasn't a, this wasn't a candid shot. Like this isn't how, this is how Tim is like chilling around. I made no, it I was, like this. I was trying to make the, uh, the Mika and Kevin, the, the photography folks here laugh. Our team says tomato soup, but I think that must've been before this came out. I don't know what this has yeah. to do with tomato. Maybe you're looking at tomato searching soup. Searching for that rabbit searching trail. Searching for that rabbit trail. No, Splendor. No, I actually have to laugh. <laughs> who dat? <laughs> I don't know why, but who dat's funny. Which one? <laughs> who dat? <laughs> all right. Okay, so, one. All right. That's, right, that's one. one. It's one. simple, but that's I love one. it. Eight figures, Eight figures on the horizon. On no. My bombastic. No. Tim's Mr. Bomb. Classic. Sexy. No. 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 Safari, Tim. No. <laughs> <laughs> I should mow the lawn. That all one's right, good. There we go. We got all right. One. All right. That's, that's number two. All right. Good. Um, Tim's looking at the future. Does my butt look big in this shit? Okay, that worked. Pull it up. Right, Does my butt look big in this? <laughs> All, All right, right, there we go. The there three go. legitimate laughs. So the three of you, Laura Doodle, who was it? <laughs> Laura Doodle, Scott Laura Doodle, Steed, and Sedoni 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 home. All right, uh, good job, guys. Just message. Who did message? Uh, uh, Cassandra. So just uh, slide into the Helium Ten Facebook DMs <laughs> and just say you were the the winner. Um, uh, the winner. T-shirts. Hope so Bradley cannot see me. I'm Project XXX. Look, look, look at this. <laughs> oh, oh, that's hilarious. Or so these are good. Bradley looking sexy tonight. What? Oh, what? oh these All are right, good. Guys. Oh, man. This is good stuff. Look, okay. we got to get back to work. All right, we're going to go back. Our handyman's going to handyman's gonna get gonna get on to us. Uh, let's go. All right. Let's go back. Uh, get, uh, hit, uh, pick a question from the uh, previous. Let's look. Are there any Facebook ones? Well, these are, look, these are all older episodes. Keep uh, scrolling up. Here's the first nine right here. Okay. Thanks again for all you do. Question: What kind of shipping that related? Nine. That shipping. Related. No, that's, that's yeah. Cheated. Keep going. Cheated. Um, Serbia from Serbia. Okay. How are we going to put the keywords in foreign language in our listing for it to make sense? Also, the misspelled ones too. 
back end, the back end. Do not put a misspelling or a foreign keyword, and, and like unless there's a lot of search volume for that uh, other language. But mostly tuck them into the back end, and uh, they'll index just fine. Okay. Oh, there, there are some. There's some still I feel great like I'm ones. Still looking. No, yeah. no shorts. Is, is the massage guy gone? <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, in Inspector Gigi gets another one. We'll, we'll, All right, we'll that's get, a fourth we'll, we'll shirt because that's, that's really good. It's the massage guy going. But that's not even, right. that's probably not even a comment about the picture. That could be yeah, a totally unrelated figure, but it's hilarious. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, <sighs> episode 10. <laughs> Still cracking up. <sighs> okay. Got to focus. Uh, here. We, we kind We've of already talked this, about that. About, yeah. So we'll uh, talk about the AAM. questions about the, yes. yeah. All right. Um, there's episode eight. What do you mean? Okay, great question. Dolores says, what do you mean when you use a baseline product in Cerebro? So uh, Cerebro is designed if like if you have a product already, that goes in so you can compare yourself against all the competition. But obviously, if you're doing keyword research for the very first time for a listing like we were doing in episode 10, you don't have a product yet. So what I do is I pick a baseline product, which is just a not, not one of the top sellers, just so I can have uh, the, the very first product right there. Great question, Dolores. Um, let's see. Uh, Tim, your, your, uh, your namesake here says, thank you to you for all the high value content. I saw that you had your sawtooth hanger attached to the coffin shelf. Are screws also included in the box for insulation? No, it's already because, installed. Yeah. So the reason we put that little sawtooth hanger on the back is because we saw in other people's reviews, they were hanging on the wall. So when we put that hanger, we could actually show, Hey, you can hang this on a wall, but we didn't add any extra value that was going to cause more conversions by having a screw or nail. Right. So we can claim, Hey, it's wall ready but not have to put anything additionally. So keep it, you know, that whole acronym KISS? K -I -S -S? Keep it simple, stupid. Keep it simple, stupid. Yep. All right. So try to keep it as simple as possible. How do you use subject matter fields in the back end? So if you have subject matter, it's not in all categories. It's also not in Europe. But uh, I like using it similar to how you use the search terms. You know, I'm going to throw in some, maybe yep. a couple of my main uh, keywords just to make sure it's there. And and also the stuff that doesn't fit in the front end of the listing, like yep. those things mentioned before. Um, the misspellings, misspellings or different languages. Different languages, yeah. Inspector Gigi says it was for the pick. All right, you guys, you rock. Love you. All right, you're welcome. <laughs> that was such a good comment. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. was amazing. <laughs> Can you apply to Amazon brand registry at the same time when you apply for a trademark or trade name? Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that in a... Later episode. The short answer is IP Accelerator. That's yeah, the only time IP Accelerator. Go. We'll just say that right there. Uh, Google that, and you'll find out some more information there. What is the minimum amount of competitors' ASINs you should look up in Cerebro when looking for keywords to steal rank? Five or more ASINs. You technically could do it with like three, um, but I always want to have at least four or five. Now, what happens is if you're using the Project X method, you're going to get into these categories like the coffin shelf where you might not there's have not great competitors. Yeah. All right. So you might even have to just go one to one to one basis there. And, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. It's just if the data is there, you know, because there are three or four or five good sellers, then go ahead and go ahead and um, uh, analyze what they're doing. You could do this. You could do this if you have that means you have to have the listing already ready. So we didn't have the listing by the time that the uh, product shipped from China. So we couldn't give it an FN SKU. Like we can't we can't uh, assign the FN SKU. We can put our own uh what's it called merchant SKU or seller SKU. You have to put that on every yeah. item, you know, uh, when you create your listing. So like it can be anything that we want. Yeah, our, but that's not code. that's not what's in a barcode. Yeah, anything. you can't do that with the FN SKU. Amazon assigns that one to you yep. and only if you have a listing. Now I want to know what Fairy Brand said. Don't threaten me with a good time. Let's see. What did Fairy Brand say to Oh, me? go up. There it is. Threaten the handyman to pose on the grassy knoll. There we go. <laughs> Don't threaten me with a good time. That's awesome. So Les says, why doesn't Helium 10 tools work for Japan? We haven't developed it for Japan yet. It's actually a very complicated process to do it in a, in a new language like that, but works in Europe because it's it's a Roman letters uh, alphabet. So we can, we can do that quite easily. Um... Carlos says, how do you know if your keywords are working? So you would do that. By the way, Carlo, in, in your honor, I'm wearing my Republica ng Pilipinas right here. Philippine. Um, oh, you know, we're, not to, we're not supposed to do accents this week. I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, uh, hat today. It was a suggestion, not yeah. a command. So your keywords are working like by keyword tracker. You know, uh, that's right after episode 10. You know, I, I, I think at the end of the episode, we talked about that. But we have the listing all optimized now. We take those keywords that we had targeted from episode nine, we stick that right into keyword tracker so that from day one, we can know how, uh, how we're doing on those keywords. Yep. Big shout out for my friend, Ivana Tinkle. 
I, Ivana Tinkle. So, okay, I, I see. She wanted me to say I, 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 I pronounced it wrong. Ivana Tinkle. Good, Good one, Didi. Good one. You got him. You got, got him. Me. Except if, if my pronunciation was correct. Bjorn just uh, joined us, ran in late. What's up? How's it going? Are you guys ever coming to Vancouver, Canada? You have any trips there? Uh, keep. There's a possibility this year. Yes. Cool. cool. All right. Let's go back to the uh, questions from. We just did that. Okay. One. So check out this one here on 17. I like this one. Uh, it says, I live in Portland, Oregon. Would it be best to use a 3PL near a major port like LA or use one near me, um, which may require additional freight and cost? Look, that's all up to you. I know people that are using 3PLs right in the middle of the country, like like Minnesota and Denver, because they want to be able to access them. Now, the way I believe that an Amazon business should be built is as outsourced and hands-off as possible. So if you're doing all the steps you're supposed to do, getting product inspections before it even ships from China or India or whatever, you shouldn't have to be that close logistically. Like if you need something, they should be able to snap a picture and send it to you. My preference is to use uh, larger ports just because there's more ships and your cost goes down, but it doesn't always mean California. Like everybody thinks West Coast. Remember East Coast a lot of times is the same price as West Coast um, overall. It might take three or four more days to ship and cost a little bit more, but usually the importing costs on the East Coast are cheaper. So a lot of different options. All I can say is whenever you're using your freight forwarder and getting quotes, get multiple quotes, different options, and uh, kind of let them suggest best thing for you. But I definitely don't think you need to be shipping stuff right to your location. Uh, Handyman had a question here uh, from the last episode. It's similar, but but he brings up an interesting point. Uh, he says, I noticed at the warehouse they were putting the FN SKU label over the UPC on the existing label. Why? Yeah, so when these products go into Amazon, everything is automatically scanned, right? The products are shot down a conveyor belt with scanners all over. The robots are picking them. Um, the employees are scanning them before they put them in bins. If you have two codes for them to scan, they can get confused as to what it is. Right, they don't know if they're going off the F and SKU or the UPC, and things can get lost and messed up. So, if you are listing using the F and SKU, if you tell Amazon, "Hey, this listing is using the F and SKU," and you already have UPC, make sure to cover it so that you don't get a duplicate scan. It's the same thing. Like if you're doing retail arbitrage or wholesale, um, and you're using F and SKU, you have to put it over the UPC. Yep. All right, uh, Nathan BZ from episode nine says around five minutes. Uh, you talked about stacking smaller search volume keywords to get higher search volume. How does this work with PPC campaigns? Would you then need to run PPC for all those keywords? Would this then get... I already answered this one. You already answered yep, that one? Yeah, yeah. When you were trying to pull okay. up my Glamour Shots right. by Deb photo. Any 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 other ones here that you hey, haven't before we go back to life? Someone tell me what movie that's from. Glamour Shots by Deb. I don't remember. Another t-shirt. First one that answers it. Wow. Better watch. Wow. All right. Let's see. Um... Hussein Hussein from Germany. No problem, no problem. Uh, <laughs> you didn't get it. Hussein Hussein. <laughs> no, I didn't get it. <laughs> uh, oh, that went, oh, went, oh, went, oh, went oh, right oh. over Tim's head. It wasn't um, funny. That's why okay. it wasn't funny. Bjorn says Frankfurt white laborers in <laughs> white labor label <laughs> expo. I think he's talking about. Um, you wanted that one? Uh, I might. We'll we will likely be in Frankfurt. That's all I'll say. Yeah. Who said Napoleon Dynamite first? Martina. Martina, slide into them DMs Ooh, and get a free T-shirt. Right. I think, yeah, Martina struck out in the first one, but there we go. What episode did you guys talk about 3PL? That's the episode we're talking about right now. Uh, episode 10, we actually went to a, a 3PL. Yep. And you'll see more talk about that later. Yeah. Does California have Amazon warehouses? They have tons of uh, warehouses here here in uh, California. Northern California. Southern Ontario California. is the biggest Ontario, one, right? Yep, yep. Moreno Valley. Let's see. Okay, Dora Lee. Uh, go back and watch. Yeah, go back, rewind this episode. We answered that already. Uh, do you have a section of a keyword for keywords for bundled products? Well, okay, here's the thing: for bundled products, you 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 basically do the same process, but just for each of the different items. But yeah. maybe now you have too many keywords, so you just gotta like focus on yeah. on, on you, you have narrow for. But the short focus. answer is no. Project X. We're not talking heavily about bundling, but the same methods do apply. Yeah. What were the criteria in Cerebro for searching? Oh, great question. Uh, the rest of the thousand keywords that you did off camera. So what I did was I opened it up. Like I, I, I didn't just limit it to the uh, keywords that at least three or four of the competitors were ranking for. I narrowed that. I didn't just do like 500 and up search volume. I like 
brought that down to 100. I did another search in Magnet where I tried to like look for broad potential, broad PPC campaigns like using uh, Smart Complete. Uh, tried to find some Spanish words in Magnet. What else did I do? Oh, I, I looked into like maybe what were the top keywords that Amazon was recommending for the competitors, just in case sometimes you can find a hidden gem that you haven't that nobody's ranking for organically, but Amazon's algorithm suggested. So, you know, I found some there. Yeah, I, I found I did a lot of keyword research off camera. Michael says, we have a lot of listings, but uh, those differ with quality price and some design details. Those have the same relevant keywords. How do they differentiate them so they won't cannibalize each other? Well, they shouldn't cannibalize each other. They should all be um, kind of indexing and uh, ranking based on their individual merits, right? Because you should have some differentiation in them. Um, but that's tough. I mean, it, it absolutely does happen sometimes where your main keyword in PPC is the same for all of them. And that's just something you've got to deal with. Uh, what I would do is I would over-prioritize the ones that you want to focus on the most and run a cheaper bid on the other products so that you're still showing up in maybe you know position four or position six on PPC instead of position one. Okay. That's a tough one. Just like his name. Could you imagine pronouncing that name? That's tough. Not as easy as Tim Jordan or Bradley Sutton. All right. So you asked uh so you asked about 3PL or write to Amazon at the end of episode 10. Oh yeah, this is the question that we asked. Like what 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 people thought that um that they would um you know now that they see both both sides of it, which one would they want to do? So Bradley says he's got a 2,000 square foot warehouse behind his house. So what's the best option? Three options, I guess. Write to Amazon, 3PL, or your own place. There's different cases where one of these is a better answer. Like if you only have like 300 units and you're almost out of stock in Amazon and all of the units need to go to Amazon, well, there's no sense sending it to a 3PL first as long as it's got all the stickers yep. and everything. You just go directly to Amazon. Now, if you've got 2,000 units and you don't want to get storage fees, well, maybe you should go to a 3PL. Um, if you just have a house uh, and a, not even a garage, well, maybe there's no circumstances where it's best to have some big shipment because you can't even take a shipment. But like, if you're like me, like you have a warehouse in the back of your house, even though I don't have like a loading dock or anything, but I, you know, I have, I've got like a pallet jack and uh, just last week I unloaded 1800 coffin shelves, uh, at my house. So, uh, if the, if you have that, then yeah, it, you're not paying yourself storage charges. So obviously that, that would be the best way to go in some cases. Yep. Yeah. I perform x-ray to check wooden egg holder sales. Wondering why x-ray shows different sales results. One day total sales 99 and next day sales less than 10. Well, if you're looking at a specific unit, uh, it'll depend. Like there might be BSR fluctuation and things changing categories, but there's a lot of reasons why uh, on a day-to-day -day basis, yeah. x-ray is different. And that's why <clears throat> it's refreshing in almost real time. So, yeah. yeah. So get the average, you know. Walang anuman, Carlo. That's thank you. And I said, you're welcome. Uh, here, uh, can you explain this to Les a little bit more about the commingled? Can I write on your screen? Can we do that? Yeah, yes, I think. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to do this. Oh, no, not that. Hold on, hold on, hold on, guys. I'm going to do something real quick. Let's go do this. We're going to write on the screen. How do I do a new? I can't do snipping. Can, can you just write on this? Is this cool? Or it's kind of, it's too distracting. Well, let me just explain it. All right. Let's explain. go back. We're, we're not even, All right. sorry. We should have been more technically ready for this. Um, so what commingled means, let me do, let me do, hey, give me that. Give me that spray bottle. All right. So, oh, this is a bad example, but all right. So let's pretend this is an FN SKU. I got to get in focus. This is an FN SKU on this screen sprayer. But imagine this is like Windex. It's a name brand and it uses a UPC. If I am arbitraging this, if I'm selling it, right, I can send this into Amazon using the UPC and they will basically just put it in inventory. My product may land in the Nashville warehouse, but if someone buys it in California from my buy box option, they're not going to ship the one from Nashville. They're going to ship the other one of these using the same UPC code from the closest place. All right. So where this, this really gets confusing and like the first big example of counterfeit stuff was Birkenstock, right? All these Chinese counterfeiters were sending fake Birkenstock sandals 
and they would get checked in using the same UPC code and just thrown in a bin. Well, then even if Birkenstock themselves made a sale, a worker would just go and grab the top one out of the bin that fits the UPC code and ship it, and it might be counterfeit. So the reason they started using FN SKUs is the FN SKUs are specific to the seller, not just the product. So if I go in, like like you can go to like a name brand, something like Windex Spray or a food, and find a listing that has 20 different sellers. Most of those sellers will actually be selling under a specific FN SKU. That mm -hmm. way it, it pulls. Now I've been in uh, fulfillment centers where there'll be a bin of something and there's, you know, 50 units in it. And then there's like 12 bins beside it with one unit of the same thing. Those 12 individual bins are the product using an FN SKU. The other ones in the big bin are the commingled bin. We don't necessarily like commingled because that's where you're getting some counterfeit problems. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we got a, the the handle of the day: Eat Sleep Amazon. Love it. That's a great. That's a great name there. Would you consider yourself under that category? <sighs> Unfortunately, yes. All right. Uh, I wouldn't repeat phrases in the title. Absolutely not. Remember, no. we had said in that episode uh, ten: Do not repeat things in the same field. Do not. Mm -hmm. Man, we, Tim's hair. And the FNSQ UPC is like the topics uh, of today. So, so again, we, we covered this earlier, Tim. So if you if you got on late, then then hop back on to to rewind this and, and watch it, listen to it. Uh, contacted three PL companies in Europe. Not a lot of companies do storage and transport. Correct. Uh, so, some either do one or the other, but th there's nothing that says you have to pick. Uh, one I that mean, does all even here in america a lot of the 3pl warehouses it's not like they have their own transport company. but usually the 3pl companies will suggest one that yeah. they've worked with yeah like when i had a 3pl i was also shipping so i could do both but other people would ship it straight to my 3pl and i had a good idea of who sucked and who didn't right if i almost named some crappy ones i don't want to do that i don't put anybody on blast but like there was one really big shipping company in the amazon fba space that people know and their stuff was always damaged consistently damaged so even though i wasn't shipping and i knew who was good so ask your three pls especially like in europe or the uk because they could suggest um good shipping companies all right three thousand andre three thousand says would you consider adding to magnet cerebro option of saving custom filter settings when applying them one button click pass it uh, on to saving custom filter yeah, I don't understand your question, but um, send that into support at helium10.com. Any suggestions? And they'll happily look at it. Um, are you guys both speakers on the second day? I'm only speaking myself and Anthony at, at White Label. It's day two, Thursday. Thursday. I'm not speaking at all. I'm just going to show up and be there. Uh, can you recommend China-based pre-shipment inspectors? So go back to the previous episodes. We talk about inspections, but usually whoever's handling your... You know, if you have an agent over there, they'll be able to, to put you in contact with one. Uh, Helium 10 notif notifies me of changes to title and category. Uh, this is about the listing optimization. It isn't me who does it, though. Does Amazon update randomly or is another? It, it could be Amazon sometimes. And yes, it could be another seller sometimes. Yeah, we were Either talking way. about these malicious black hat people that are making changes or it could be Amazon. But have those alerts turned on. The hijacker alerts, the listing change alerts, because you never know what's going on and you need to be notified. Yep. Do you recommend using Amazon PPC to rank to page one or a combination of Facebook ads and PPC? All right, we're going to talk about launch in future episodes, uh, Janika. But the short answer is Amazon PPC is powerful. I'll mm -hmm. tell you that. If my product didn't sell out and six months is up on Amazon, can I buy it all myself and then arrange for another shipping plan? So you don't have to buy it yourself. Yeah, you no. can do a removal order. Um, and I will say that Sometimes the removal order is actually more expensive to do than just taking the long-term storage fees, right? Um, when you do a removal order, they charge you, I think, like 30 cents per unit. Then they all come back. Like, if you have 50 units, they're going to send them back in 60 boxes. Like, it always happens that way. It's a giant pain in the butt to take care of. But you can get them, repackage them, hold them, then resend them back in. Yeah. But by the time you do the removal order and the reshipping it back in, it probably costs you more than just taking the long-term storage fees. Yeah. Um. Christian says follow up to that what we were talking about earlier, but repeating title on back end is correct. It's you can't you can't it's, do it, but it's pointless. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, but well, I have shown that it, it helps sometimes, but in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to do much on its own. Just by doing that, it's not like oh, I'm going to get to page one. Yep. What happens with oh, good question, Mario? What happens with ranking when you change your title if you're already ranking some keywords? So this is something regardless of title or wherever you change. 
we suggest like re-optimizing your listing sometimes because you know buying behavior changes. But sometimes I've noted it. I haven't checked this in the last three four months, but Amazon trips out the algorithm when you when you when you update your listing. Even if you do the right things and you, now you you're optimizing your listing, you'll notice a big drop in keyword tracker across the board. Yep. But then it usually kind of like. Yeah. So, so I think what Mario is asking is like, if he has a, a listing and title and it's selling and realizes his best keywords aren't in the title and saying like, Hey, can I now swap out some keywords? Listen, when you do that, you're going to hit some bumps in the road. Sometimes you recover quickly. Sometimes you don't. So make sure that this is really a good long-term decision. And if your best keywords aren't in the title, but they're in your bullet points, there might not be that big enough of a difference to justify making that swap. Um, because Amazon can do, some crazy things uh, with de-indexing and recategorizing and stuff if you're not careful. All right. So Benji asked, the 3PL the same as a freight forwarder? No, although sometimes they overlap. So a freight forwarder is someone that ships. Uh, 3PL is usually a warehouse based on the location that you're selling that is going to store, package, prep, can ship. Um, some companies, like we were talking about Unicargo today, has both. But generally speaking, a freight forwarder and a 3PL are two different things. And Born brings up a good point, guys. It, it, it's it's different every, every time, so it's not uh, every single time uh, removal is going to be the way to go. You got to calculate your fees out. Yeah, uh, but well. you can you can definitely add it up and make sure also that everything you're doing you're calculating your time, because some people would would argue what I said. Well, if I do thirty cents a unit and then ship it back in, but you're not calculating your time. I mean, if your time is worth thirty dollars an hour, sixty dollars an hour, and it takes you ten hours to do that. You have to add in another three hundred or six hundred dollars, right? So make yeah. sure you're calculating your time too. Um, total, there's fourteen episodes. We we filmed one today, and there might be another one that we started today that I'm not sure if we're going to be able to finish in so, time. So yeah, officially so 14, fifteen. Officially fourteen was filmed about an hour and a half ago. It finished. Okay, where many many chat attribution we don't talk about that uh here in uh project x that's too uh, alberto is a little bit too high level but that's definitely something you should um take take a look uh, alberto at the serious sellers podcast the episode that just dropped on thursday with lazar do you know lazar you ever met lazar no from serbia yeah lazar is a ppc attribution expert he got some great tips there a listing optimization episode 10 Ashutosh says, would you have high volume, high CPC keywords in your title right from the get-go, even when you're not targeting them through PPC? No, no. And future episodes are going to talk about this very in depth, like our launch strategy. And you're going to see, like, I even do some horrible stick figure drawings of like how to do this, but no, I would not immediately target those high volume, high cost per click, expensive, competitive keywords. But I might, if, if I eventually will, I might put it in the title because he's all asking about that. If you think you are going, if you think you are if, going to later. If yeah. you can do that without sacrificing yeah. the first keywords that you need to attack, which are the bottom of the pyramid keywords, then yes. Can we use the same three PLs that Amazon use? The Amazon doesn't have three PLs. I mean, Amazon has their own warehouses, pretty much. Uh, yeah, so sure what he's a, about. a three PL is like, a third party logistics warehouse for hire. So Amazon has warehouses, but they're not for hire. If you have a personal warehouse, would you ship everything to it first, then to Amazon? Remember, it depends. If you only got 300 products, you don't have to worry about storage charges, then that's a waste of shipping charges uh, and a waste of your back. If you have a bad back like me unloading all those 1800 coffin shelves, um, not, not a good look, but, but, yeah, eighteen hundred coffin shelves that would probably get hundreds of dollars of storage fees. You know, if, if it doesn't sell out like we think, uh, like like you you might think yeah. it is, then yeah, th then have it shipped to your to your warehouse. But there are definitely cases where even if you have your own great warehouse, it doesn't make sense to send there first. Yep. That PPC is going to be litty. Can't wait. All right, all right, guys, we're going to do one more uh, one more uh, t shirt. Um, Contest. Uh, we didn't. We didn't think what we're going to do for this one. So, what do you? What do you? What do you say, Tim? What's What's the contest going to be? Is that the only thing we're giving away? Do you have anything else? Yeah. So, we've got that workshop coming up at ASD. I can give away a ticket to that. All right. The price on that's four ninety nine. Four hundred ninety nine. Four ninety nine. Let's do yeah. that. We'll just do one of those then. All right. The so, um the website for that is VegasASDWorkshop.com. VegasASDWorkshop.com. It's next month during Prosper in Vegas. Uh, I'm sorry, Prosper and ASD in Vegas. It's like the biggest week in e-commerce. Bradley and I are going to be there for like eight days in Vegas. It's going to be insane um, how much stuff's going on. So Vegas ASD workshop, that's one that I'm doing in partnership with ASD. 
It's literally a one-day workshop doing this, how to find products there. All right. So what I did was I wrote a number between one and a hundred. This is so right here. basic. All but. right. I wrote a number between one and a hundred. It's gonna be basic, but the basically the first person who gets this number right, and I wrote it down here. So wait, wait, wait. Should we do one to fifty? Because I mean this could take like 20 minutes. Pick a new number. All right, a new number from Write it down. 50 to 100. Oh, that's a good idea. It's a Be number from 50 between to 100. 50 to 100. And I'm Go. holding it. Yeah. You can't see it. 50 Don't to 100. my little Ooh, scratch. Dead those. gum. That was. All right, it's not 77. No, so keep guys, going. Be, be listening to what, what I say because then. Um, the 400, the guys, this is big. This is a $499 ticket here. Uh, it's not 89, not 69. Carlo, what are you doing? Uh, it's not 98, <laughs> not 76. <laughs> Not no. 73, not 86, not 78. That was a good year, though. Not 92, not 56. People have literally hit before and after. Not 84, they not have 56. Dean Cook! Not 76. Dean Cook? Yep. Got it. Dean Cook. There it is. 70. You can't. Oh, it's out of focus. 72. 72. That's it. He there got it. it. All right, Dean Cook. So, Dean, track me down on Facebook. A Vegas ASD workshop. Track me down on Facebook. Send me a private message, and I will get you a free ticket to that next month. For Prosper ASD in Vegas. All right, guys, we're coming up uh, towards the latter half now uh, of Project X. We just finished week, uh, or not week, but uh, episode, episode 10. 10. We're in week five. Uh, we've got episodes 11 and 12 uh, next week, and then episodes 13 and 14 and next the week, following week. Yeah, next week, the AMA, we're going to film it from San Francisco. That's yeah, right. We're still going to be Fran. together next we're week. We're going to be at the um, Seller Growth Summit, sellergrowthsummit.com. We're going to film it live from there. There's still a few tickets available if you guys want to come to San Francisco next week and hang out with me and Bradley. It's next right. Friday. So, guys, uh, you you guys are going to say goodbye uh, to Tim, and you might be like just like missing him, like looking off in the distance. So I'm going to close this episode with uh, Tim here. So be looking off in the distance to Tim as he goes away. And, Hunting uh, those keywords. Yep, hunting those <laughs> keywords. All right, see you guys later.